Welcome everybody to Madden NFL 19. It's time for another year of franchise, and this year, our journey takes us to the sunny city of Miami, Florida. Home of the Dolphins, a team with a rich football history and two Super Bowl championships. However, in recent decades, the Dolphins haven't had much success. Our goal is to bring them back to the top of the AFC and chase another Super Bowl championship. Welcome everybody to the Miami Dolphins franchise. It's time to get underway here in Madden 19. I've been so excited to get this series off the ground. And the new owner of the Miami Dolphins is Bo Lee, Kalispell football legend. Our journey begins here in the year 2018 with the Dolphins over 40 years removed from their last Super Bowl championship in 1973. We all know over the last two decades, the New England Patriots have controlled a lot of what's happened in the AFC and the NFL as a whole. The Miami Dolphins are one of those teams lucky enough to play those Patriots led by Tom Brady twice a season. And since Tom Brady's arrival, the Dolphins have had almost no success in the NFL. The last Dolphins playoff victory came in the year 2000, the same year Tom Brady was drafted into the NFL. If we're to turn this team back around, we must go through the New England Patriots. So let's get to know this Miami Dolphins roster, starting with the safety Rashad Jones, one of the top at his position in the NFL, a very versatile player, and one that I can't wait to see out on the field. Then at defensive end, one of the best pass rushers of recent years, Cameron Wake. The former Canadian football star has been a premier pass rusher for a long time, and he's put together some of his better seasons late in his career. He's 36 years old, so I'm not sure how many more years he plans to play. At quarterback, returning from his ACL injury last offseason, Ryan Tannehill. Now, he's already 30 years old, and we're still hoping that Ryan Tannehill can get better from here. But he has to prove a lot here early in the series if he's to be this team's long-term answer at quarterback. Adam Gase has a multiple zone run scheme, and the defense is going to be a base 4-3 in this series. We'll go through each side of the ball a bit more in depth now, starting with the offense and left guard Josh Sitton, who was acquired this offseason. Players like him don't normally hit the free agent market, so the Dolphins got very lucky he was available. At right tackle, there's a player we can build around for a bit more time, and that's tackle Jawan James. Very good pass blocker, but not a great run blocker. As far as playmakers go, Kenny Stills is one of their best and one of the better deep threats in the NFL with his great speed. In the backfield, the Dolphins didn't have a very good season a year ago, but Kenyon Drake out of Alabama did emerge. His skill set is one that really fits today's NFL. Devontae Parker, opposite of Kenny Stills, is a player we really need to see take that next step this year. It's the final year of his contract, and I'm hoping he earns a big second deal here with the team. Another O-lineman, the young Laramie Tunsil, another pass-blocking specialist. I'm really hoping that he and Jawan James can be a great duo for many years to come. And at tight end, Mike Gesicki out of Penn State. He's incredibly athletic and could be a great field-stretching tight end with some development. Along the defense, I love the defensive line. This team has some good edge rushers. However, things are pretty incomplete. We talked about Cam Wake. There's also William Hayes. He's going to play a little bit of end and a little bit of tackle at the same time. He's a very good run defender. There's also Robert Quinn, who was a really good pass rusher a few years back. And then the rookie I can't wait to build around, Minka Fitzpatrick. He's going to play both corner and safety for us, and I think he has superstar potential. I can't wait to see what he can do this year. Raekwon McMillan did not get to play as a rookie because of an ACL tear, but he is back, and I have very high hopes for him. This team's top cornerback is Bobby McCain here in his fourth season, and cornerback is one of those positions I think we'll have to do a lot of drafting and developing with early on. Another outside linebacker on this team is Jerome Baker, a rookie out of Ohio State. He is slated to start. This linebacker core is pretty inexperienced, and we're going to have to do a lot of work to this defense. The specialists are Jason Sanders, the rookie kicker, 
Matt Hawk the punter, and Jakeem Grant will handle returns. Minka Fitzpatrick is your slot corner, Danny Amendola your slot receiver, Frank Gore your power running back, and Stephon Anthony a sub linebacker. The Dolphins did bring Frank Gore back to Miami this season where he played his college football. It could be the final year of his career. We'll see what Frank Gore is able to do. Right now, this team's value is ranked number 30. We have so much work to do in various departments on this team. I've set all the prices now for tickets, merch, and concessions. I initially started out here with the ticket prices being a little bit lower than default. For merchandise, I raised a few that I thought we could make a little bit of extra money on. And then the jersey situation is really strange because we have jerseys here for players that I just signed who were like practice squad players for the Dolphins. So I'm not sure why they chose Antonio Morrison and Isaiah Ford for those things. For concessions, I kind of mess with these prices a little bit. Unfortunately, we don't have the best stadium. It's now 31 years old, so I don't have access to a lot of the higher rated concessions or anything. So I might have to think about building a new stadium or upgrading the existing one. I'm not sure that I'd be able to get new concessions though. Is that even possible through renovation? Let me know in the comments. I'm not really sure. I do have pre-existing injuries on, so players who were put on IR during preseason are also on IR here in this series. Alright, we'll get to some gameplay now. We have some practice highlights and we'll talk more about the team and what to expect here in the opening season. Thank you all for staying patient though as I got sliders and everything ready. I will show the sliders at the end. I do believe they're going to give us some really fun games. So I hope you are ready to go for a new franchise. I want this to be a big bounce back year after the Bears franchise didn't exactly go how I had hoped. I'm wanting this Dolphins franchise to be one of my best yet. By the way, these are week one rosters with pre-existing injuries. And I've also gone to make sure a few picks have changed hands. The picks that Chicago traded for Khalil Mack, for instance, are now with Oakland. And Teddy Bridgewater being traded to the New Orleans Saints has sent a third round pick to the New York Jets. So I made sure I took care of that. Now with Miami, offensively, I think there are a lot of players here that we can work with. I like Tannehill and his skill set. I think Kenny Stills and Devontae Parker are a great one-two punch at receiver. And then you get Kenyon Drake, who is a very athletic running back who should allow us to do a lot of things. However, the offensive line is not very complete, and the Dolphins are so lucky that Josh Sitton became available. They still don't have the best center or right guard, and then Jawan James is a free agent after this year. I think Josh Sitton is very close to retiring, so O-line is going to be a concern. At the skill positions, I think that we're not really worried about running back right now with Drake and Kalen Balaj, the rookie out of Arizona State. I like both those players. At receiver, we'll see how Devontae Parker develops. I'm not really sold on him quite yet, but I'm really hopeful if he can stay healthy and make plays for us in the red zone. I also like Mike Gesicki. The backup quarterback situation is one I will be addressing. Brock Osweiler, who you see right now, is this team's backup quarterback. We need somebody who has the potential to push Tannehill if he is not the answer. So I will be scouting mid-round quarterbacks this season. The Dolphins signed Luke Falk off of waivers once preseason ended. He was drafted by Tennessee. For now, he's a number three quarterback, but he could be our number two with some more development. Overall, this Dolphins offense, I think, has the potential to make a lot of big plays, but I'm not sure how consistent we're going to be. We don't have a lot of standout talents, but a lot of players who have the potential to become standout talents. Defensively, we're strong up front and at the safety position. I think that everything in between has a lot of question marks. We need a lot of help in our linebacker core and at cornerback. I do wonder how our pass defense is going to be in year one with maybe poor coverage but a good pass rush. I also wonder if those linebackers are going to be able to have an impact in either the run or the pass game. So there's a lot I'm not sure about with this team but I am very excited to get this all underway. The focus players to start out are going to be Devontae Parker, Raekwon McMillan, and Laramie Tunsil. Three players I think are really important to our future. And I do have XP sliders here in the game. I'll show those at the end as well. 
Now for some more young players that could play a big role down the stretch, but maybe not so much early on. One of them is Kalen Balaj, who is a power running back. Frank Gore has that role for now, but I think Balaj has a lot of potential. I also wonder what we can do with Isaac Asiata. We don't have great guards right now, and Asiata would be one of the more intriguing run blockers. He's extremely strong. There's also Charles Harris defensively. We're pretty good at edge rusher. Harris had a good rookie season, and he should be a good role player this season for us. And if Robert Quinn doesn't get the job done, he will play. Torrey McTire at cornerback is only a 70 overall, but he does have pretty good zone coverage and speed. He's one player I do want to keep an eye on. For our practice squad, these are the 10 players I have signed, including South Florida rookie Quinton Flowers, who played quarterback for the Bulls. He plays running back now in the NFL. I just like versatile players that can do a lot of things, and he offers good strength, good athleticism, I feel like those are the kind of players you should try to develop long term. At wide receiver, we have Austin Prohl, the son of Ricky Prohl, who played for the greatest show on turf, Rams. His dad had over 600 catches, so how many will Austin get in this series? At defensive tackle, there's D'Angelo Brown. I always look for high strength defensive linemen here, and we'll see what D'Angelo Brown can develop into. These are the sliders that I'm going to be using here at the beginning anyway. The XP sliders are what T-Dog uses on the Operation Sports forums. They're a favorite of many here in the franchise community. And I like the fact that a lot of these positions develop a little bit slower than the game does by default. The gameplay sliders are a combination of Matt 10 sliders from Operation Sports and Charter 04. I go to those forums quite a bit around this time of year to get things squared away. Now, I've kind of mashed together those sets and found a set that I like. I'll probably make some changes at some point, but I'm hoping we get some really fun games this year with these settings. Here's our schedule. We're going to open the series against the Tennessee Titans in the next episode. I'm not sure exactly what day that's going to be, but expect it early next week. We play the Patriots in week four and see them a little bit later in the season. We play the NFC North this year, one of the better divisions in the NFL, and we have a pretty tough final stretch here against the Patriots, Vikings, and Jaguars before wrapping up with the Buffalo Bills. Captains have been chosen for the first year in this series. Rashad Jones has to be one of them. He's our top rated player and a great safety. He's also one of the only players we can count on to cover Rob Gronkowski. Also, Cameron Wake was already a captain. Ryan Tannehill as the starting quarterback. Starting quarterbacks tend to be your captains. We need Ryan Tannehill to lead this team. Kenny Stills was also a captain when we got this thing underway, so he stays a captain. And the last captain I've assigned is running back Frank Gore. At age 35, Frank continues to be a productive back. We'll see if this is the last year of his career and what he can do. Head coach of the Dolphins is Adam Gase, who's only a level two coach and very few of these upgrades are unlocked. He does help out quarterbacks, which I guess is really helpful, but it's all he's going to offer us right now. There's a lot to do with him still. As far as the scout goes, it wasn't my idea to have a scout who specializes in running back overall, but I guess the game knows me quite well. I'll probably draft one at some point. I'm not sure if I can fire him though and hire somebody now. I think you can only do that in the offseason, so I think we're just kind of stuck there. Anyway, that is going to do it for episode one here in the Miami Dolphins franchise. I hope you are all excited for the games to get underway. Let me know what you think of things so far and what are your expectations here in year one for Miami. Thank you all for watching and staying patient while this series was getting ready. Now it's here and I hope we hit the ground running with games this week. Please leave a like if you are excited for the series and subscribe to the channel. We're on the road to 200,000 subscribers and we are less than 10,000 away. See you all next time. Have a great day.